Good day fellow investors, the focus of this channel is on long-term wealth creation and too often people get distracted by short-term stock moves, by small dividend changes 3-4% and lose the focus on the big picture and on where you want to be in 10-15 years. So today I want to discuss my view on the best way I think how to create long-term wealth by discussing a very interesting topic and that's how to become a millionaire. I want to share with you four steps and then also my personal story on my path to becoming a millionaire. Let's start immediately with step number one, which is focus and habits. Becoming a millionaire takes time, of course. It can take a few years, it can take a few decades. Nevertheless, if you have the focus, then everything is easier. Because when you have a goal and you go towards that goal, the universe will work with you to get their goal. If you say, I want to become a millionaire, but you don't commit, you don't focus, you don't set goals, you don't take action towards becoming that millionaire, you can never become that millionaire. And that part, taking action and focus, leads also to habits. You need to have the habits of becoming a millionaire. This means creating the capital, investing the capital, Focusing on the goal of long-term wealth creation, because to amass a million you need to focus over the long term, thus create certain habits. And just to tell you immediately, the habits I'm talking about don't involve saving, frugality and all the other boring things that you will see a lot of videos on YouTube. I see becoming a millionaire as a positive way, as a growth way, where you live your life to the max and not save and limit yourself by not spending on anything and not having fun in life. All right, step number two, creating the initial capital that can multiply to get you to a million. There is no secret formula there. You have to find something you love, do something extra, get a job, find something that can create that extra capital that you can later invest into something that can grow towards a million. I would say that in order to get to a million, you need a starting capital of at least 50,000. I believe that anybody who speaks English, thus anybody that watches this video, can easily get to 50,000 in extra capital that can later be invested into becoming a million. Be it an additional job, business, uh, showing your passion on YouTube, having a blog, whatever. Today, I think everybody can get to extra 50,000. Of course, you have to put the extra work. There is always the boring way, saving 500 bucks a month over a long period of time and over 10 years you get to the 50,000 to invest that with a 2% interest rate, blah, blah, blah. And then inflation usually eats everything up. And then when you save enough to get to a million, you're already 60, 70. That I find a little bit boring. So let's stick to Finding something extra to do that can also be with your job, getting a special bonus for something extra from an idea that you get that really propelled your company into more growth. So start focusing. We go back to the focus on how can I get that initial capital and I bet you that in the next few years, I'm not talking here about tomorrow, nobody can come be become a millionaire in just a few days. I'm talking about the mindset that over the next 5, 10, 15 years will make you a millionaire. So first mindset is look for capital creation and that is something you have to see with your own personal feelings how to get there. Now when you get to the 50,000 you need to invest in investments that can go up 4, 5 times. And for that you again need to focus on such investments. Such investments are usually growth investments that are exposed to what is going on in the world and what will be going on in the world. We have the benefit that Wall Street is focused on the next quarter or on the next two quarters and not on the long term. The best example for that is Amazon. I here have some indications of Amazon and what the analysts were saying about Amazon in 2009. They were saying, will it ever be profitable? Will it go bankrupt? What will happen with the competition? And so on and so on. And even Goldman Sachs had a target, which was super positive for Amazon, that it will hit 100 in 2009. Fast forward eight years, we are now past 1,100. This shows you how short-term minded is Wall Street and how if you focus on the long term, you can really get to great investments. 
However, there is also some risk. If you would have invested in Amazon in 2007 when the price was 90, you would see a decline to 42 in 2008. That's more than 50% in less than a year. Nevertheless, if you look at the 90 and if you look at the current stock price, that's more than a tenfold increase over the last eight years. 50,000 capital in such a stock is already half a million. So if you really wanna become a millionaire, you have to look at the long term. If you're distracted by dividends, two, three, four percent here and there, interest rates or short-term stock moves that make you 10% one month, but then next month you lose 10%, you are hardly going to accumulate enough to become a millionaire because you are going to spend a lot of time on the stock market and not by doing other things that can accumulate the capital to get you faster to that million. So if you look at the long term, you have an advantage in comparison to Wall Street because Wall Street looks in the short term. And I think it's not that difficult to find investments that have the possibility to become 10 beggars over 10 years. You just have to be focused on that and look towards that. Now, you could say, okay, but if I invest only in one stock, it's risky and could go bankrupt. Yes, that's why you don't invest in one, you invest in three, four. And even if only one becomes a 10 beggar, the other, let's say, doubles and the other does nothing, you're still very, very well ahead. And if you repeat that every seven years, you'll be very, very well ahead over 15 years. And from 50 to a million in 15 years is a very good result. Secondly, if you find such stocks and you let them do the work, you have time to accumulate more capital, focus on creating more capital and focus on finding other opportunities. And the second opportunity I want to discuss is real estate. Real estate is different from stocks because you can use leverage other people's money to buy in. You can put other people into the real estate to pay your rent, to pay your mortgage, and then you can enjoy the real estate appreciation, the cash flows from the mortgage. That is another example of how to get to a million. As with stocks, you have to invest time to find the best piece of real estate, the one that will appreciate a lot, as always, location, 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 and that will lead to higher and higher cash flows. For example, if you want to buy a 300,000 real estate property, you need a down payment of 60,000. You get the mortgage, you get the tenants to pay back the mortgage. If you have some extra cash flow, even better. If you bought an interesting piece of real estate, perhaps you refurbished, perhaps you improved it, who knows? You can immediately add some value to that. Further, if it's in a good location, with the inflation, with the money printing, real estate prices could continue to grow over the next 10 years. And you can find yourself after 10 years with a real estate that's worth double what you paid for. But remember, you didn't pay for it. The mortgage paid for it. So if you made a 20% down payment on a 300,000 property, you invested 60,000. If you fast forward 10 years and that property is now 600,000, you made five times your initial down payment. So that's another way of thinking long term. If you think short term, what can happen to the real estate market? That's always a risk. But if you think long term, the trends are pretty clear. More money, more inflation, higher real estate prices. So think about it. The fourth step, and I think one of the most important steps is have fun and keep the focus on growth. There are always two ways to becoming a millionaire. Am I going to be frugal and not spend anything? And then 20 years pass and you understand that you have spent 20 years of your life but not spending by not growing. And on the other side, I think we sh if we grow, if we invest in ourselves, in we if we invest in businesses, if we learn, 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 then creating the capital, finding investments becomes easier, easier and easier because you're a smarter person. And the smarter you are, the easier it is to find better investments. So my message is, don't be frugal, don't limit yourself in life, grow, go for it, go for the highest possible potential that you can achieve. In the long term, the difference will be millions, your lifestyle will be 10 times better, you will enjoy it, you will grow and you will feel the best what you can feel. Plus, you will have millions. 
On the other side, limiting yourself, not spending, not investing is very risky because anything can happen, especially if you're saving, inflation will eat up your money. So think about growth rather than limiting yourself. As promised, I want to share my personal story. So I always wanted to become financially independent, rich and free. So when I was 15 and I had luck, I didn't look for a job. I didn't want to work for somebody else. And I started my own business. It started out of fun from my passion, which was diving. And I started diving and I started catching something very interesting, which are worms that are used from fishermen to fish for the fish bait. And when I was in high school, I would, over the summer, I would catch those and sell them to fishermen. Slowly, slowly, as I was growing into that, from selling it to my neighbors that went fishing, that became a real export business where I was exporting every week those worms to Italy. The funny thing is, so I went to high school, ran back home, dressed up, went diving and caught these things. Nevertheless, I was doing that through my whole high school and when I was 19, I had a capital of 50,000, which I was saving from what I did. I was a frugal boy because I didn't spend it. Now, when I look back, when I think at what was I doing, I regret that I was frugal. If I would have bought a camera, if I would have filmed what I was doing, if I would have started a YouTube diving channel, my earnings would have been much, much bigger. So the frugal really brought me to 50,000, but I think limited me on a lot of other opportunities. Nevertheless, second step, I took those 50,000 and invested in three companies. I invested in a bottling company that had a price earnings ratio of seven. I invested in an Ericsson subsidiary that had a price earnings ratio of three and a dividend yield of 30%. Yes, 30%. And then I invested in a third normal company. The Two stocks that I bought at a price earnings ratio of 7 and 3 were extremely illiquid. One was also delisted and then relisted. But I didn't know much about stocks and I didn't see anything disturbing in that illiquidity. So I put my money there. A few years later, the bottling company became a five-bagger. The delisted stock be relisted and apart from great dividends, became a 10-bagger. So my 50,000, the first stock didn't do anything, became around 350,000, which was a lot of money for a boy of 23 years old. Of that money, I spent something to buy a boat, have fun in life, go diving, travel around the Mediterranean and things like that. But there was some capital left. So in 2009-10, I had about 200,000 and that 200,000, I again invested in a very illiquid stock, but that was paying an 8% dividend and was growing very well. It was a camping site. That stock again quadrupled and I was close to a million. I spent some money, invested, did a PhD and so I didn't really reach a million. The second step I did that really helped me propel to a million was buying a piece of real estate with, as I live in the Netherlands, I don't need a down payment. So I managed to pick the bottom in prices and after that, we have seen a boom in prices, especially in luxurious areas where I bought my home, because I think the real estate prices here boomed 50% since I bought it. So no down payment on my mortgage and 50% higher. When you sum everything up, 15 years have passed and I can say that I am a millionaire. The previous stocks I bought were not in dollars or euros, but the point of the story is how to get to a million not the currency involved. Depends on where you live and where you were born. So that's my story. I hope you like it. Looking forward to your comments. I hope I have motivated someone to become a millionaire by growing, not become a millionaire by being frugal. Keep watching the channel as we constantly discuss investments that can lead to long-term wealth creation.